What are we doing? We're still talking about auto tracking. And I'm really sorry that this might seem boring and, oh, can we please just move on? Can we just do some exciting tutorials about, you know, how to use Synthize as an onset visual effect supervision tool? And how do we do full on rotimation right in Synthize? And I mean, there are a lot, a lot of places we can go, but I want to stick to the basics because underneath all of that are these basics. And I hope that you can see that I'm heading somewhere with this. We're heading to supervised tracking, but we're gonna continue on our little detour and use auto tracking and like explain why some shots can be auto tracked and why some shots need to be supervised and how sometimes it'll be a hybrid of both. So I've got my footage loaded uh, and I'm gonna hit the space bar and there it is, it's playing. If you look in the lower right hand corner, if you stop mousing around, it'll show you the speed at which it's playing. So you can see that under view, normal speed. If you set it to frame by frame, it's gonna play super fast because Synthize can track at this speed. You don't wanna track at this speed because you wanna see what it's doing typically. So let's go back to normal speed. And we wanted to see how the auto tracker does on this shot just out of the gate. So I'm just gonna hit auto. All right, let's see what we've got. Let's go to the trackers tab and just hit play. Uh, I'm not loving this. <laughs> let's turn off the trackers in the display floating toolbar. So we only look at our 3D points. And it looks like Synthize is trying to do something, but it's obviously it doesn't know what to focus on. If we go back and show the trackers, you can see tr Synthize tracked. Here, let's turn off the 3D points. Synthize tracked a bunch of stuff inside the car, and it also tracked things that are moving in the environment, like this big yellow crane. So Synthize doesn't know what you want to track. That's the main problem here. So I'm gonna select all of my trackers and I'm just gonna hit the delete key. And we're gonna start over. But this time, before we start over, I wanna talk about Roto in the Roto masking room here. So here we are in the Roto masking room. You'll notice there's a spline. It's already assigned to the camera and it's blue colored. I can grab control points on the spline and I can drag them around. So that's all good. But what you're saying is that everything inside this blue spline, I want tracked. Okay, well, we know that we really only want things that are outside the window. So let's drag this up a bit. We'll put that control point there. And we'll put this control point here because this plexiglass thing inside the car is no good. And then we can drag this down here and we can drag this over here. Actually, we, all the way over here. Let's just do that. The first thing you should notice is, wow, we don't, we don't have a lot really here to track outside the window. This is a very small view out into the world. I've now moved my control points on the on the spline, so let's just hit auto again, see what happens. Well, that's better, right? It's seeing things outside the window, at least. But our, our you know, roto spline isn't really rotoed. But let's, let's go to the solver room and deselect everything and look. Our overall tracker error is 10.224 pixels. So this track is virtually useless. So that's no good. Let's undo back to here. Go back into the roto masking room and talk a little bit about this roto mask. So you've got a bunch of points. You've got the control points on the on the corners and you can drag those around. I can drag the, the spline origin and it'll move everything. So zoom out a little bit and uh, do some adjustments here. So, that, okay, like that. And then like Roto, we can go halfway through the shot to like frame 120 and then 
drag this down a bit and move this over and uh, and we'll just hit play and we'll, we'll see here that our our spline shape let's turn off show image so we can just see that the spline is actually moving it's a little confusing with the image on because it's so shaky but now we might go to frame 40 and move the whole spline again and move our control vertices we might say hey we need another control vertex and so if we look here in the upper left hand corner this will give us our mouse control so mouse uh, left click if we shift left click it says add point well let's try that shift left click oh look i created a point and you'll notice that point is uh the interpolation on that is uh smooth we don't want that Oops, I don't want to do that. I, I accidentally right click, and if I right click, it's going to kill that keyframe. What I really want to do is uh, I want to double click on this, and then I can, by double clicking, I change it to linear. It's still not great. The roto is bad because you can see they're jumping frames here. So when you when you see that, you have to go to that frame and you know move your your garbage mask. You also have one more, which is the scale and rotate. So you can scale and rotate your shape. So I'm going to delete this shape completely. I'm going to stay on frame zero and I'm going to create a new box shape like this, just to get us back to generally the beginning without having to restart the scene completely. Let's turn that off so that we don't accidentally create any more. And now you'll notice this shape is red. So what's the deal with that? Well, before it said spline one plus camera, now it says spline one plus garbage. So let's let's assign that spline to be inclusive. Let's lock this spline so we don't accidentally select points anymore. And we'll create a new spline because the first thing you click should be the center of the roto shape that you wanna make. That's gonna be your main handle. So let's do it right here. And let's just create a shape around these, uh, these stickers in the window, because if we remember earlier, the auto tracker picked up a whole bunch of these stickers. We don't want those. Synthize doesn't use Bezier splines. So in order to gain more control over your splines, you just need to add more control points. So I can shift click to create more control points. I'll shift click here, but boy, man, that, you know, just to keep things under control, that's a bit of a nightmare. So I'm going to delete this spline completely and I'm going to start over. I'm going to click here and I'm going to, for my first point, if you double click the first point, it's going to make that whole spline be linear interpolation on the control vertices. So that's cool. These are going to be much easier to control. We don't need as many. We're doing garbage splines here. We're not doing hyper accurate silhouette perfection roto. So let's do this. Let's go into the image preparation setup. I'm going to go to levels just like usual and make a new preset. Turn off all this junk and leave only color and blur related. Clip our highlights a bit, drop our gamma. We're looking for things, trackable features outside the window, so I don't really so much care about about this, but let's make another preset and I'm going to call this one stickers. Turn that off. Turn these off and on stickers, we're going to be tracking these stickers up in the window there. So let's really drop our highlight a lot more to bring out more detail in the stickers, which we can see better if we move this window down. And let's gamma up even more just a bit. And let's go to filtering and turn our noise reduce up slightly. Right about there. That'll, that'll be good. Going back to levels, I could probably drop it even more. Yeah, there we go. Now we're getting more contrast in here. This is what Synthize is going to track. And I'm gonna hit okay, and it's gonna save both of these presets I created, Icon and Stickers. 248 frames are gonna be flushed. Do it. What are we gonna do here? How are we gonna make the roto easier? I'm gonna go to shot, and I'm going to say add moving object. And now I have this moving object here. I'm gonna to go to the window and I'm going to say floating hierarchy view. And I'm gonna turn the object off. I'm gonna make it invisible and I'm gonna select it. 
you're going to see the active tracker host now is set to object 01. And now we are going to do some of our first supervised tracking. We want to automatically move this roto shape to stick to these, these uh, stickers in the window. So let's go to the tracker room and I'm going to lay down a tracker that's gonna be generally in the middle of this whole mishmash. And I think 2104 here is a good candidate that 2104, yeah, that's pretty good. So let's track that. I'm gonna hold on the C key and I'm gonna put a tracker on this. And I'm just gonna hit the space bar and let it track. Let's zoom out a bit. Oh yeah, that didn't work. That was terrible. When it comes to 2D tracking, you've got two boxes. This is typical of every single tracking application out there, uh, the Nuke or After Effects or whatever. So you've got your inside box, which is the pattern you are searching for. That's what this is right up here in the upper left-hand corner. We're tracking this pattern. Let's, let's do what everybody says. We'll like limit it to just the zero, just like that. That'll be awesome. So. Here's, here's the key that you should really get used to using. It's the five key. If I'm like way over here and I hit the five key, it centers the tracker and it will keep it centered. And it is a toggle. Here's the other thing about manual tracking. And I'll say this a lot. It's a skill like playing a musical instrument. You have to develop muscle memory. And what I do is I take these four fingers and I put them pinky, on the A key, my ring finger goes on the S key, my middle finger goes on the D key, and this finger goes on the F key. A and F jump between keyframes. Next keyframe, previous keyframe. These two are next frame, previous frame. And you'll get used to that. And it's much easier than playing a musical instrument. This isn't like a fretboard on a guitar. And now you can hold down the D key and then lift your finger off immediately when you see problems. So what are the problems? Well, look, it's the, you can see our, our pattern here. If I use the A key to jump back to the previous keyframe, looks a lot different from that. When you go forward and it gets into this huge motion blur area, it gets a little confused. But the other problem is that the outside square is our search area. You're not looking for that pattern in the whole image, that would be crazy. That would be nuts and it would slow the whole process way down. So let's first of all, go back to frame zero and make our search area much bigger and keep our eye on it. And we'll just tap the D key to go forward and watch our supervised tracker do its thing. Well, here it shut off automatically. And the reason that it shut off automatically is because previously it went off like and then once it hit the edge of the screen, it turned off. Your trackers will do that. And uh, you just turn them on and off here using the tracker enable on this frame. So I can enable it right here and it'll pop right back to the pattern we were tracking. So here, I'm just holding down the D key and I'm tracking and I'm tracking. Hey, this looks great. Oh, this track. Oh, what happened? What happened? Well, something I see is happening is that as we drive in the car, I think we're going under like, you know, maybe power lines or like a tree branch or something. And it's causing the exposure of the 2014 to fluctuate. I can just click here in the upper left hand window and create a keyframe. And then I can go forward a frame, create another keyframe. And then I'll just kind of tap forward and look what we get through that problem area. So here I'll create another keyframe and I'll tap forward and I think we're, I think we're good. I'm just holding down the D key now and we're just tracking. Oh, no, no, it jumped off again because our exposure changed. So let's create a keyframe there and there. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Wonderful. Love it. Hey, that tracker's done. Not bad, but I'm going to get a little more advanced on this. Not too advanced, but a little bit. So let's delete that tracker. Ugh. Oh no, I have to redo the work. So sometimes it's better to let's create another tracker, but this time I'm going to create it right here, but I'm going to actually make this that whole 
2014 pattern. And sometimes when you do this, again, you're giving Synthize a little more to grab onto. And if I hit play, let's see if it holds on any better, even through those flickery areas. Mm, nope, still got a little screwed up there. So let's click here. Nope. The reason that I do the two keyframes, I, I did one here, and then when it gets dark, I do another one immediately, is because now the pattern, the master pattern is darker like that. So I'm, I'm getting a little more juice out of it. Yeah, I think we're going under a tree and there are a bunch of, I think there are a bunch of uh, mottled leaves, shadows from leaves or something. So, okay, here we go. All right, so on this pass, fewer keyframes down here because I made the, the search pattern a little bigger. So I gave it gave Synthize something a little more to latch onto. Let's do even more. I'm gonna delete that. Let's let's go even further. I'm gonna go into the image prep setup. Let's um let's move this up here. I'm gonna make a new preset. And I'm gonna call this one stickers. S-T-I-C-K-E-R-S. I lost my train of thought while I was in the middle of typing. Turn off everything but color and blur related. But this time I'm going to go to filtering and I'm gonna turn up high pass. That's too big, that's way too big. I'm gonna make it more like, you know, six or seven. But but now our pattern is all whacked out of, it's not good. So let's raise our, yeah, there we go, that's better. And let's, uh, let's gamma up kind of a lot. And now we can really see that 2014 in there flush all the images from the cache and save our new high pass sticker operation. Uh, trackers. Let's lay down that tracker again, right here on the 2014. Look at that. Well, okay. Look, Ma, no hands. I didn't lay down a single keyframe. The high pass filter got rid of the flickering for us. So again, like having these, oh, I, I misnamed this one, rename alter, <laughs> Well, it's a perfect opportunity to take my mistake and learn a lesson from it. So we're gonna call this stickers high pass, high dash pass. Uh, and hit okay. So now I fixed my calling that the same as stickers. When I go back into stickers, let's bring these back to the, like these values. Okay, there's that. Stickers looks good. Filtering, high pass, everything's off. Noise reduce, I'm gonna reduce it back down a little bit uh, and go to stickers high pass. That's all good. Great, um, let's go back to the stickers. Actually, yeah, that's good, and hit okay. We have a tracker, and we didn't have to put any keyframes on it, but I'm gonna show you another methodology, and so we're going to add another tracker, and let's put this one, let's put this one over here, shrink that a little bit. This'll be good, I don't think this one's gonna work throughout the whole shot like that last one did, it might. Nah, it did not. So let's just go into the image preparation setup and go to stickers high pass and see. Yeah, that looks like that color correction is gonna work well. Whoa, no, it totally did not. Uh, let's see if there's another pattern that we could track that might give us a little more to grab onto. I'm going to lock that tracker. Now we've got two trackers on this and and uh, let's go back to our roto. Going back here, I'm gonna switch this to high con just so we have a more reasonable representation of what the footage looked like when I shot it. Okay, so how do we use this? How do we use these two trackers? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do in the roto masking room is I'm going to say import tracker to control point. So think about the, the syntax of that sentence. Import tracker to control point. So I want to select a tracker and then I want to select a control point. And then it's gonna give me a choice. Do I want it to move my whole roto right to the tracker? Or do I want it to remain retain its relative position? I do want it to retain its relative position. So I'm gonna hit yes. And now I'm going to hit play and watch as my roto shape beautifully just 
attaches itself to the tracker. You can attach any control point to a tracker. So with import tracker to control point, I'm going to say, I'm gonna take this tracker and I'm going to attach it to the spline to scale rotate. And again, I want it to be the relative motion. So there you go. And now you're gonna see, if you look very closely, that the, uh, the spline shape now does slight rotation. So that's pretty great. Okay, so you see my, um, my control points all are green. And you might say, hey, in my synth eyes, those aren't green. Well, that's all controlled in the preferences. Control points are confusingly named flex curve point selected. But actually, if I uh, go forward a few frames, all of my control points are not selected. They're just not keyframed and they have all turned to a different color. One of the features I asked for a while ago, let's go back into preferences, was that we get these little swatches in the list. So it really does help you identify, I'm looking at this thing in my, in my interface that's kind of a, you know, whatever color. I, what, out of this list, out of this giant list, what is it? Is it TTIP automatic tracker BKGD cam view other tracker, I mean, like these names are not user friendly, but now that you have the, the little color swatches, it's so much easier to find them. So I've changed mine to green because it's easy to see them and they pop out more. Up in the upper right hand corner of Synthize, there's a little SUG button, suggest a feature. I highly recommend it. And I highly recommend going through, seeing what other people have suggested as features and get conversations going because if we want to improve the software and make it easier to use and get better results faster, this is a great place to go. So you see all kinds of suggestions. You're gonna see my name pop up a lot. <laughs> I've got a whole whack of them. You know, look at other people's suggestions and upvote them and, you know, participate in the Synthize community. That's how you exclude blips from being selected as trackers. That's how the rota works. Another thing to discuss, it's kind of important, what, in what order are these evaluated? The way to look at it is like, you have a big filtration system, you have a bunch of filters up here, and you have a bucket at the bottom that's gonna capture everything. The bucket in this case that's gonna capture everything is spline one, camera one, so it's at the bottom of the list. And you dump all your blips in and they all get filtered. The filters are gonna be the, uh, the roto splines. And this roto spline, because it's set to garbage, is going to say, no, no, any blip that appears in there is garbage, don't use that. So let's just go in and look at my roto. There is not a lot here to hold on to. So let's just go to the summary panel and hit auto again. And now Synthize is going to try and track what is in the background. Let's give it a little more contrast though. I'm gonna go to high con. All right, so this is good. I'm just gonna hit auto and cross my fingers. Let's see what happened. Okay, first of all, it's not even tracking here. There's nothing, it's not holding on to enough features to track anything. So that's a nightmare. That's not gonna work. I'm also noticing that it's picking up features all over the shot that we don't want. I'm going to load another version of the shot where I did do a bit more roto. Okay, there, here's our, here's our Roto version two. Let's go back to the summary panel, hit auto again. Cross our fingers, because it's not gonna work. And hit okay. Oh man, it's still terrible. Um, and so camera's not even tracking. It's not even tracking, it's not even tracking. We're already up to frame, what here? Does the camera ever start tracking? Obviously it does. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it starts tracking here where this tracker right here goes bananas and slides across those features. That's useless. <laughs> oh boy. Um, let's do something that I do on all shots. Let's go into the tracker room. I will go to layout camera and graphs. 
you can see that th this is color coded down here. I can turn that off and on just like I did earlier, but the color coding means in the gray areas, like in here, that means Synthize uh, has a, a higher um, confidence that you could actually run a solution. Red or pink, salmon colored, no. It won't even try there. Yellow, maybe. Green, okay. What is all the, what, are, what are these color codings all come from? So I'll go to window floating graph editor. If I switch this from the graph mode, which we were looking at earlier, to this mode, the tracks mode, you can now start seeing your lifetimes of your trackers. And when you look at this graph as an overview, it's useful to see, like you wanna look at it like a path, like a diagonal path that will show you how much tracker coverage you have in time. But I can drag this up and you can see I also have a graph down here. Why don't you just use that graph? Well, because I like having my screen here and, and I have two monitors, so I can just drag that off screen. And I, I mostly use this down here for the, the color feedback of, are we good to solve this yet? If I middle mouse up and down here, I can bring it up to where we see active trackers. And right now I know on frame 56, I only have 15 trackers. And that's in time coverage. So I'm going to drag the graph editor off screen and I'm going to look at where all my trackers are, my 15 trackers on this frame. You need your trackers stretched out or spaced out in time, but also in 3D space. And I'm going to say that a lot. You need them covering both time and the 3D volume that you are trying to derive a 3D track from. What have we learned here? I mean, this is pretty much the end. I, I can't really take this any farther without doing some serious work. There's no point in running tracker cleanup on this. I'm not, I don't even have a, a reasonable solution. And by the time I run tracker cleanup here, clean up trackers, yeah, kill them. It's like just delete all the bad trackers. Um, and now let's go to our tracker. Wow, it just blew away all of the trackers because they're all bad. So there's, you know, you're in a bad place when you get a shot like this and you are going to try and use the auto tracker. So tracking supervisor would look at this right out of the gate, look at it and go, oh yeah, no, we're not gonna even try and auto track this. This is pointless. I mean, the amount of effort you're gonna need to just try and get the auto tracker to work is not gonna work. So there you have it. In the next tutorial, we're gonna dig deeper into supervised tracking. I'm gonna show you how I approach a shot when I do supervised tracking and how, because I hire people, there are sometimes we'll get jobs that are like, well, hey, you need to do these 90 shots and they all have to be done in a week or two weeks. And you can't have one person do that. It's just not feasible. So that's the next video. We're gonna do that all using this footage from this Shanghai shot. Uh, that's it. Um, leave comments and questions below. Uh, and also m mention like other things that you do want me to do tutorials on because I'll happily like take that into consideration. I have a whole list that I wanna do, but if I see a bunch of people saying, no, we really want this, I I'll do that. So give me suggestions, give me comments, hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe. And then I'll see you in supervised tracking land next.